question. When I worked at, um, in, in previous roles, I did a, a lot of heavy um, veteran recruiting. Um, and what I found, and especially for construction where we are, there's a ton of transferable skills, but sometimes military resumes are very militarized. It's, it's the language or the words. And what I suggest and when I would interview candidates is I would dig in a little deeper and be able to say, hey, did you look at this job description? It says, you know, manage a budget or manage this. I'm assuming when you were this ops lead or you did this, that you had a team of people that you managed or you did things. So it's really, it's, it's trying to transfer what you did in the military into kind of more civilian terms or more corporate terms. Um, and there's even some, and I put it in here, there's some websites that'll let you do that. You can kind of throw in everything you did in the military, your skills, your titles, and they'll transfer it, like translate it into more kind of corporate or civilian speak, if you will, so that then your resume matches more of the jobs, uh, the job descriptions that are out there. I was going to say, so I live in LinkedIn as a recruiter, and a lot of recruiters live in LinkedIn. Um, so I always say your LinkedIn profile should match your resume. Um, and just for perspective, every job that we post, we probably get 100 to 300 resumes of applicants that come in. So that's a high volume. And so we're going to kind of keyword search to see if the skills on your resume match the job description, the, the list that we've listed what we need. And a lot of times what we'll do, people will also look at the resume versus your LinkedIn profile just to make sure they match up um, and people aren't embellishing or that it looks the same. I will say a resume that sometimes I'm a little questionable about if I go into their LinkedIn profile and they've have a lot of recommendations, people have, you know, endorsed them for different skills, that will raise the resume up a bit because it's kind of like a reference in real time. So that's always, if you can get people to give you recommendations, it's an easy little thing you can do on LinkedIn. You can send them a message. LinkedIn says, hey, we'd love for you to give us a recommendation and they'll write it and it'll go right on your profile. Um, if you're job searching, set your profile to open to new opportunities. So every recruiter like myself or stalker, or like you want to say, um, we will see that when we go and look into profiles, it'll say open to new opportunities. You can put locations you're interested in. You can put remote work. You can put part-time. You can put full-time. You can put contract. You can put whatever you want there. That will bump you up to the top of the list for recruiters who are looking for people's jobs. And I have hiring, but you can also put open. But if you're also working for a company and you don't want them to know that you're open to jobs, you can do it that's private and only goes to recruiters. There's a way to put it as private so it's not blasted on your, your page. Um, follow companies that interest you. So we have about, goodness gracious, um, we probably get 5,000 new followers um, right now about a month or so. So it's a pretty big volume for us. And I can go through and see everyone who's following our company. You can also, recruiters will set searches to show who's following the company and they will reach out to you first because you've already expressed an interest in the company, whether you know it or not, you subliminally have. Um, so follow companies that interest you, connect with recruiters, um, utilize your network. Jody and I already said that. Respond to recruiters. Um, even if you're not interested, I I get recruiters that respond, that reach out to me with job opportunities. Um, I know some recruiters give recruiters a bad name, I think, because they'll just blast and send an email to anybody, even if you don't have the skills that match. But if it's a good recruiter and you feel like they sent you a nice message, it makes sense. I would respond and say, I'm not interested right now, but I'd love to follow up for future opportunities. Keep me in mind. Um, I, we already said this. Don't post about politics or Facebook. Um, don't use it as a Facebook. It's a professional network. Um, and monitor your dashboard. There's this little dashboard you can see down here. It'll show you who's viewed your profile, which can be an interesting little um, thing that you can see. Um, you can see um, if you came up, what kind of appearances you came in up, if recruiters are looking at you, if other companies are looking at you. A lot of times I'll use that as an opportunity to connect with someone who might have looked at me. Um, and, and like I said, recruiters will always be looking at your profile. So. It's really about the relationships because a lot of times what will happen at a job fair, you may give your resume to a recruiter and they've talked to 400 people that day, 300 people, your resume goes to the bottom of the pile. But if you have a connection and you ping somebody on LinkedIn and you have a conversation, you get to the recruiter, get to the hiring manager, you're kind of cutting down all of that, you know, your ability to go into a black hole. Um, and I do agree sometimes I think it's just a, they go and gather resumes when they don't necessarily always have the right opportunities that match the skill sets. So. Yeah. College fairs are always, we'll always do job fairs for college, but that's a different, um, but I agree. Sometimes it's not the best use of anyone's time. Yeah. So really, I mean, those are just some of my, what I see and it's just, it's a great, 
And I'm always happy to, if someone wants to have a one-on-one with me and I can walk you through and jazz up your LinkedIn. I do it for all my friends and I do it for candidates. So I'm, I'm always happy to help with that too. Me, my experience, and especially in construction, there's so many transferable skills and there's so many transferable skills in the military. I mean, there's project management, there's budget, there's multitasking, there's working under pressure, there's, you know, the stress. Um, and just being able to kind of be able to speak to that and show those skills. Um, and I always, and I pull this from, from LinkedIn, um, veterans are more likely than lifelong civilians to be reliable team players, strong problem solvers, critical thinkers, team leaders, and detail-oriented workers. And I have found that to be true over and over again with any veteran that I've hired um, in any industry. And so I think being able to speak to those strengths is really important. Amen. So I had just put a couple of things in here. You can go to um, the vet verification military experience and training, and that's really what will give you the overview of the skills. You can kind of translate that into civilian terms. Um, you know, listing technical skills. I think that's huge. Any technical certifications, tools, technologies you used. Um, budgeting is huge. Um, it's critical skill, especially in construction, project management. Um, you know, leadership, discipline, strong work ethic, um, all really important skills and, and great. Allison, one of the things we found that vets tended to ignore is they would not emphasize their ability to deal in different cultures. Huge. And, and that's huge. Different religions, different ethnic backgrounds, Iraqi, Israeli, mm -hmm. uh, Pakistani, whatever it is. And they, they take it for granted. It just came with the job, but it's a big, big skill that's very transferable to the construction industry. 100% agree. And I also think the transferable skill is when you're in these roles, you're dealing with, you know, every level, right? And every, you're treating every, whatever role people are in with respect and the way you're communicating to get things done. And, and that's right. You're doing that every day in, in corporate world and in construction too. I think it's huge. This is just kind of the same thing. It's just another website. It's called Military Connection. You can put in your um, specialty code, which is cool, or your title, um, and it'll present you with jobs you might qualify for and how you could use your skills and how you could write even the bullet points on your resume, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, education, I always say this, um, you know, if you don't have a degree, it's not required for every job out there. Um, don't get intimidated. I, you can put your professional development, any job relating training, conferences, um, seminars, online learning, if you're currently in process to get a degree or a certification, um, whatever it might be. Um, I think it's really, you know, just don't get yourself so freaked out about the degree and, and especially in construction. Um, we will hire folks without degrees um, at any time. It's not, it's not a requirement um, for every one of our positions. <laughs> Um, adding any community service, extracurriculars, I always think this is great, it kind of talks about what Bob was saying even before, like the transferable skills you've got, add a little personality to your resume if you've done volunteering, um, awards, honors, anything like that, I'd love to see um, things like that on a resume. Also, I will say if you work in customer service, if you've waited tables, if you've worked um, any type of job like that, it says a lot to recruiters. Um, that you can, you know, there's customer service skills, working under stress, multitasking, you name it, dealing with pains in the ass, as, you know, Bob would say, or all those good things. <laughs> also, I will say, please don't put, um, a lot of people I notice on their resumes will put like the job there, I'm applying for a job as in something, something, and then they'll forget that the resume they've shared doesn't match any of that. <laughs> Um, and so I always think it's better to have like a summary, like this is my skill set. This is what I do. I am a problem solving, blah, blah, blah. And I like that too. And once again, it's going to pull out keywords instead of, oh, they applied for a marketing position. They have no marketing experience. They're just trying to get, you know, anything. So um, I think bullet points, anything tangible, people want to know your results, what you've done, what your, what your responsibility was, what the action you took, the, you know, result. It's, I just, sometimes I see people write paragraphs in resumes and I've already stopped reading. <sighs> so I get so many resumes all day. I want bullet points, clean, concise, chronological order, no more than two pages and a summary, not a job like what you're applying for. So I would agree. So I will tell you the one thing when people do the fancy resumes with pictures and infographics, what people don't realize is what's called an applicant tracking system, which where I'm getting all the resumes are coming through our website. It destroys those resumes and it basically like pushes them out. They like reformat them and then they look crazy and they also oftentimes get lost in the mix. Um, I like a clean, if you want to send me a resume, Steve, by the way, I'll give you my email and I could look at it and let you know, especially from a construction perspective. Um, 
but I, I like, I just like a clean resume. I like a nice, um, I, if in construction, I will say the one thing it's nice is to list projects. If you've, if you've worked at a previous construction company, we like to see the projects, the type of work you've done and the size and the volume or the uh, cost. But if you haven't, um, then you can kind of, we can look at the projects you've done previously and kind of translate it into that. Um, and especially, I will say a lot of times you won't see companies advertise higher level executive level positions um, because they're usually engaging our executives to reach out to their network or they're asking like myself, a recruiter, to do kind of a confidential search on LinkedIn um, for those skills. So that's where I think connecting with the recruiter at a company that you're interested in when you don't see a position that matches what you're really looking for. Um, I, I get that a lot. People reach out to me all the time and I dedicate an hour, um, I try to dedicate two hours a week to answering all my emails in LinkedIn and at least connecting them to the right people. And that's where I think that's that's really where you, where you wanna go. You wanna reach out and connect with the recruiter or the HR director, you see talent acquisition leader, anything like that, send them a note on LinkedIn and, and explain just that and, and what value you think you could bring. And usually that'll prompt a conversation where we can at least talk to you. I find that a cover letter is helpful and also a note to the recruiter explaining, saying, hey, I realize I haven't had this job title per se, but these are all of the things I've done that match the qualifications in this job description. I'd love to talk to you about it in more detail. Um, and I will tell you, the amount of people that apply for jobs that they don't have the title or necessarily the qualifications is all day, every day. So I also think take a shot on yourself and apply um, because what also happens, even if people sometimes apply to a job that maybe they don't have that executive title or they're not senior level, I'll see something in their resume that triggers, you know what, he has the skills that I'm looking for for this team, or this could be a good role for something I know that's coming up. And I will make those connections and get those resumes to the right managers or have those conversations. Like they might not be right there yet, but this is a really good resume. This is why. So I'm just telling you people, you're saying maybe it's intimidation. I can tell you, there's a lot of people that apply for jobs they're not qualified for all day <laughs> or 25 <laughs> jobs, um, you know, at it's one true. time. So yeah. So <laughs> give yourself a little confidence or if you find a good headhunter and outside a recruiting agency that has a good reputation and has great clients, I always say, use them. It's just one more way to get into a company. So on my side of the house, I have a team of internal recruiters that work for me. They represent DPR. They're finding the best talent but we can't, the volume we're at. So we will partner with outside recruiting agencies or headhunters that we trust, that we have relationships with. We'll say, hey, I need a senior or something, or I need a estimator, go get me some candidates. And then they'll reach out to someone like you. They're representing you. They'll submit you to us. It's a great way to find a job, but don't ever pay a headhunter ever. They're getting paid a fee by the company. So okay. if I hire you, I'm going to pay them 20% of your salary. So keep that in mind. They need to work hard for you if they're representing you. And I think I do. And I have seen that. I would, I'm not going to lie and say that I haven't seen managers that'll say, and this is an HR thing that people say, well, I don't know if they have a lot of runway left. And so I love that that's a way of saying, you know, you know what it's saying. I, they're probably saying about me at this point, but it's, um, I always say, you know, that's interesting because what they have is experience and skills and maturity and leadership. And we, the opposite side is, you know, they're bitching about millennials that need a new job title the day they start, or they need all of, you know, this handholding and they don't want me to hire, you know? So I, what I do is I just try to mitigate it. I push back. I ask a lot of questions. Um, I don't see that as much at DPR, but I have seen it at other companies.